Hello and welcome to Tykes TV, uh, Neil is here and Tom. Tom, it's been a while but I uh, appreciate you coming on mate, um, long overdue but uh, finally got your own bit of work and stuff so pleased to uh, be being able to join mate. Always pleased to be here Neil, cheers. Alright, um, yeah it's, it's been a while, uh, you know after New Year kind of thing, just coming out of January, going to February, what we take on things up to now uh, Tom, do you think we're more or less we we are in table due to performances, or do you think we've overachieved a bit? Um, I think uh, I think Duff and getting Duff in has been one of the best signings we've had for a long, 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 long time. Um, mm. I can't talk about him in any higher terms, really. I I've, I just think he's done an unbelievable job from where we've been. Um, and I think it gets taken for granted just how um, bad a position we were in at the end of last season. We couldn't be any we couldn't be any worse. We could have been. I, I know in terms of you say a championship, we're going to League One. But if you look at everything, look gloomy in it. Every everything. Um, and he's come in. He's not ripped it up to shreds. He's he's not ripped everything up. But he's just changed the whole. Um, feeling around the place, he's, he's changed the whole um, setup. It just feels professional. It feels like he, you trust what he's going to say. You trust him to be honest. You trust him um, in terms of what he knows. Um, we said that we needed a proper football guy in at the start of the season, didn't we? Someone who knew the like knew the ropes, knew knew all the different leagues, knew um, this level of football, and and he is the guy. He is the guy, and. I think we've got to be really careful not to take him for granted because if you look at that squad that we've got, um, I don't think it's great. I think mm -hmm. we've got some decent players. Um, but to get him to where we are um, with what he's got and what he's worked with and where we were at, I think it's an unbelievable achievement, if I'm honest. Um, and even if we dropped out the playoffs, I think we've got to stick with him. We've got to stick with the long-term plan. We've got to stick with what he's doing, um, in my opinion. Um, and I, th I think, to be honest with you, we could be, we could be, we, we've had games where I, I feel like we should have killed teams, really, really killed teams, um, three, four nil, um, and we've not taken chances and we've not done stuff. Um, but I honestly think that um, if we can keep Duff for as long as possible, uh, I think he's, I, I just think he's a, he's a, he's a, a decent work, good manager just what we needed um so I, I can't praise him enough to be honest and all the ones who work um his backroom team and everything so i think he's done i think he's done well with that because he's managed to get um guys who know the club um i know devaney were there for a long time before but he's got players who know the club he's got players who um buy into obviously what he does um it's like when he wins his, when he's manager of the months and he's like the same team behind the team and stuff like that. And it's important because it's like it, it's um you've got to build something, haven't you? Yeah. I think we needed to build something and and we were building from sand at the start. So I think he's done um done a wonderful job and there's gotta be some credit as well for um who's appointed who's appointed him as well. And I know there's Cali gets a lot of stick and he gets a lot of this and a lot of that. And you know what? I've got to be honest with you, I'm not his biggest fan. I think he's made huge mistakes. I think he's made terrible appointments, but this one's a good one. Mm. I mean, just going back on some of the points of what you raised here and, and, and great ones as well is like, yeah, but, uh, Duff came in knowing, you know, full well they want cash to spend and they're having to work on free agents, players out of contract kind of thing. He's done well. Uh, he got his, you know manager at month twice, uh, and that's no mean feat as well. Uh, working on like a, one, probably one of the smallest budgets. Um, you know he's not a splashing the cash about kind of thing as such as other sides. And I get where you're coming from as well. Is that I think he's done well as in he's trying to build standards and uh, uh, you know trying to set things in place where it's like to be an expected. This is how we need to play and implement his, his own philosophy on game. It's not always whipped out. I get back, you know, and people have said, you look at the Wicking game when we lost 3-0 and he tried changing back to four formations. 
But in the same respect as well, is that you look at the personnel as in the players, he didn't have the luxury of having to bring players on at, at, you know, as a substitute at time. And even, we'll get on to players in a minute, even now, I still think it'll probably take him another probably transfer window this summer to finally get a, a squad built, more or less. There's foundations being built there, and you can see that coming on to like January uh, window in a minute, where you can now try and think how he's right, wanted to implement and dictate a game. He wants to stick with three at back, and he likes to up front. And we'll get on to transfers now, is that I've been, I want to be, I want to critics like saying that, you know, we're, we're needing a, a striker, a striker, a striker, and we all kind of knew that. And it didn't come after August winter. And certain things haven't worked out, Tedich, obviously, for certain reasons. And I was questioning at time what's the best, our best from two pairing at times. So, H and, and Cole, we've seen Norwood and Cole, we've, we've seen a mixture, a combination of things. And now January's been and gone when we've got players in. I thought we pretty did not too bad considering that we didn't have any money to spend. Bit surprised. Well, I were a bit surprised that Walton went in January, but I can see the, the logic behind that is that we're out of contract, get a bit of money, and we try and rebuild. So for me, with players what have come in or what you've seen, Tom, is there any players that you were a, surprised that didn't leave, i.e. Anderson, I don't like that. And the recruitment side in it, do you think they did well in certain positions? Yeah, I've, I think first and foremost, we've got to be realistic about where we're at. Um, mm. I saw that uh, Doug O'Kane had posted on uh, Twitter, I think it were part of the, um, it might have been after the deadline, and he put something that, um, considering that, I think he put, considering the, uh, that Barnsley are still recovering from long Conway, they've done all right. And I thought that that would bang on, to be honest, because they're yeah. recovering from the absolute mess of last season and the mess of, and, and the wages that have been wasted. And, the, you know, we know there's not much in the kitty, but you've got to look at what you can do, what you can do and what you can do with what you've got. And I think that's where, again, where um, Duff's done quite well because there's been players who have been I think the there's some players who have become available who um, you wouldn't necessarily have thought would have been available. I don't wouldn't have thought John Russell were available, and then mm -hmm. that's that suddenly transpired and suddenly came through. Um, and I think if anyone's going to get anything out of him, it'd be him. Because um, I remember seeing him last year at Uddersfield, and he ran the ran the show against us. Um, and he's obviously got quality. It's just about. Um, bringing that out in, in that form. Um, we've, the one with the, it's in, always interesting to see fans' reaction when you sign a player who, and they say, oh, well, he's not very good and he's not that. You've got a lot of people who have never seen these players play um, and I'm not going to um, act like I've seen Ollie Shaw play. I'm not going to act like I've seen Barry Cotter play. I've, I've seen Barry Cotter play one game that when we played Ipswich mm -hmm. and I can't remember that because it's a long time I've slept since then. It was a while ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we've got we've got, we've got players who are we've brought players in um, in areas that we needed. Russell maybe not maybe not needed a midfielder, but we brought in the Bobby Thomas signing makes perfect sense. Yeah. Uh, the Cotter signing for me makes perfect sense. I mean, if if it's twenty grand and it, you're not breaking the bank and he, he you know and they, they see something in him, give him a go. That's fine. Yeah. That's alright. And let's not just write them off. Let's not write off these players before we've given them a go because holding on to players is equally as important um, to signing them. We know that. Um, again, club got slated for by some quarters saying, oh, well, the marketing has the, these players have signed contract extensions. We've just um, taken up the year option. Well, the, well they have, but what's the alternative just say we don't take the year option <laughs> yeah it seems it seems like uh it seems like perfect sense to me and you know eventually some of these players are going to go but we've we've got a real chance now this season i think we obviously we won't catch top two but real chance now to get in the playoffs even if that don't go well for us 
it's something to build on, something to build upon. And I think that the attraction of seeing that we've actually got players um, who we're willing to give an opportunity to, hopefully you like to show and you players like that, they come on and they do all right, and it's it's an incentive to for other players. Players talk, play. You know, people see stuff. They'll say, "Oh, Barnsley giving an opportunity, playing good football, doing this." You know, it's 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 a good chance. I, I'm looking forward to seeing uh, some of those players. And we've also got, I think, one of the biggest things will be if we can get Luke Thomas back and fit. That'll be the biggest. Uh, that'll be like a biggest new signing because I always I keep looking at the way that we're playing, and I think that that. That link up between the midfield and the strikers still feels a little bit missing. Mm. It still feels in certain times of the game where we don't break the lines and we don't, you know, um, we're getting more success from crossing positions, I think. Mm. Uh, but I think that's because Cadden's um, really coming to his own. Um, we're obviously Jordan Williams, but you've got players who are actually, you've got players who are um, we're coming in from wide positions. Um, I think Luke Thomas, though, um, he was outstanding, wasn't he, at the start of the season? Yeah. Um, so hopefully we can get something with that. Big shout out to James Norwood as well, by the way, because I think he's been, since that, I think at one point there were a, uh, one, in, one that I came on with and I, I said he, he looks a bit like a pub player sometimes. <laughs> I, wasn't, I wasn't trying to be rude or disrespectful, but I think he sometimes looks like he, he does. If he do, if he makes a bad touch or whatever, he does look a bit like a cart horse. <laughs> he does. Um, but then I've seen other games, <clears throat> were brilliant. you are brilliant at Accrington, mm. um, home and away. Um, he's he, he's just he, he's what he, he's what we what we needed at the time. Cause I think a bit of nous as well. Um, I'm just hoping that Cole steps it up a bit because uh, I think he's dropped off. And I think you look at I look at Cole every time I see him play, and I just think. He's got some superb attributes. He's got all the attributes to be an absolutely outstanding player. Mm. Um, and I just feel like there's just, you know, sometimes I just feel he's just holding back and he's just, you know, because we know he can do it. We've seen him do it. Yeah. But, yeah, so I, I think I, it'd be interesting to see how these games go. Um, and you've not got me onto referees either, have you? So I can't. No, we'll, we'll come on to that in a minute because <laughs> it's I know clubs put a, a, a lodged an appeal to EFL about that. So I mean, I, I get your point with players. I mean, like you said, Norwood. I think he took a bit bit of time to get him in into you know speed to things. Um, and again, I've said it before. I'd love to have seen. James Norwood at Barnsley probably three, four, five seasons ago. Yeah, absolutely. And I thought, you know, we'd have been a different come player. Um, and like you said, Via, I mean, with players, I, to be fair, I haven't really seen them play. Uh, Ollie Shaw, and, you know, it's not a, a league I've watched or follow. Same with Barry Cotter. One thing I have been impressed with and I do like is Bobby Thomas. I think he's a, a right player. Um, Done really it, well. Is it, slotted him back. I mean, unfortunately, with Tom Edwards, but I think. Bobby Thomas has come in, he's slotted it back. It seems it, it seems like he's been playing for us for a couple of seasons. He doesn't seem out of place. Up in right areas uh, for goals. I, it's one of them players, me, I, I, I just hope he was our player, um, you know, not on loan. Because I think uh, you, you're looking at back three V and it just seems so... So what's his, uh, what's his contract situation, Neil? Do you know? Is he out of contract at the end of the season? I think he's out of contract at the end of the season. Um, and I'm hoping that it, you know, he enjoys his time at Barnsley and Michael Duff knowing, you know, know about the player and obviously he had him in under twenty threes at Burnley. I'm hoping he can somehow work at some kind of magic and persuade him to come here, even if it's just some kind of nominal fee. Um, I'd I'd say yeah, because when you when you when you're looking at Burnley. You've got such as like McCarthy to come back from injury. You've got uh, Kundi. So you, you're going to have that kind of depth for you. And I think with games, you need that depth. And like Luke Thomas, like you said, Via, is that it, it's Michael Duff is the kind of manager what gets the best out of players. I mean, Michael, uh, we all know about Thomas with his issues last season. But Michael Duff seen some of him back play and is like med, giving that belief in his unfortunate injury, but he was having a, an absolute fantastic season up until then. Um, and like I say, you can go for like such as Cadden. He had some great stats at Forest Green and when he came to Barnsley, thinking, he's not much of this. 
But now he's been given back time and back run. You can see that attacking threat, and you can yeah. see Duff working on certain things. And you that can way, see it coming that, through. I, 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 we did say I, I thought there were a lot of undue stick at the start of the season talking about players and different stuff. You're talking about a team who finished with what? What do we have? Thirty points in the last season, mm. and then you've got new players coming in, new manager, new everything, new system, uh, players moving. Moving out, move. The, you know, you've got loads of players coming in, relocating, and coming and doing all that kind of stuff. And and I think there's been a lot of talk about so been a lot of talk about plenty of things about expectations and this that mm. and the other. I actually there's been a lot of people who have been um, slagging fans off as well and saying that the atmosphere has not been great and it's not been this has not been that. I think they deserve a medal, our fans, from yeah. last season, from where we were. Yeah. If I'm honest, look at how many go going down to Portsmouth, how many people are going, how many people travelled to Exeter and got screwed over with that. You, you've mm. got what we've got a real loyal fan base, and you know, the atmosphere might not be great as well. It's a bit different when you're playing these smaller teams at home and you're doing this thing, and it, and you know, winter months and people are struggling with money. Let's be a little bit more realistic and a bit more sympathetic because I think actually a lot of people, um, a lot of people are, you know, back in the team even, even after, you know, feeling. I think a lot of people felt a bit betrayed last season, a little bit let down, a little bit um, apathetic about it. But for the, for us to get such numbers away from home, and for us still to get decent numbers at home, um, I think there's a, a lot of people deserve a lot of credit. And you know, it's it, you've you've got your usual faces who will be there no matter what, but. Don't take them for granted. Yeah. Good shout back, Tom. Uh, I've seen that and it's like, it's like quick to say, oh, well, oh, well, not like this, not like that. And you've got to think about the long term. Why has it been like that? And like you said, we still travel well in numbers. And like what you said, via Exeter on, a, you know, all the way down via on a midweek game, to get called off people. So again, we've got some diehard devoted fans and cost living crisis. Not everybody's in a luxury position where they can go to every game. They're going to have to pick and choose the games. But like you say, you've got to you've got to be realistic and and and, and thank for all fans uh, for the support through thick and thin. Like I say, from last season, we're still getting decent numbers, even though it, it were doom and gloom and we were going down. You could see what were happening. You could see a club imploding, but it didn't stop. You know, still following no matter what. So yeah, good shouting back, Tom. Uh, We've got to- not to get ahead of herself as well though, because we've got into a we got into a position where we're in a good position, we're in the playoffs and we're in that kind of stuff. If we're realistic, I know a lot of people were saying, Oh, mid table I think I probably said mid table I can't remember, but mid table at the start of the season and mm. like, make sure we don't because we had a lot of people saying, Well, we'll be looking not to get you know, if we get relegated again, it wouldn't be a surprise. Yeah. Like, yeah. And there was a lot of that, there's a lot of that, and it can get easily get forgotten. Mm. It, it, you people have got short memories, you know. We can forget where we're at, and I'm not saying if we play crap, don't just we're not accepting it. I get that. I'm not mm. saying, and I'm not saying that everything's rosy and everything's perfect. But from where we are, I'm um, I'm pretty positive, to be honest. You can see improvements, mm. uh, and you, you mentioned it earlier, and we'll finish off on this. And it's, I think, in general, I think standard refereeing in general, even when you go from Premier all the way down some of the choice and uh, decisions and that. But, I mean, what's been happening at Barnes for the last game, for, for few games, to be fair, since it's like some standard refereeing for me, Tom. It's like questionable at best. It's, I, 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 think, don't, I don't know. I don't I know. Think, um, I, I think if you look at the 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 games that we've been involved in, um, I don't know if there were a game before Accrington where we had a poor referee, but I, the Accrington one seems to be the... Seem to be the Start of it, hmm. and um, she had a horror show that day. Uh, hmm. Referee, um, and just there were poor decisions left, right, and centre. Um, and I, I know people always go on about consistency, but it, it's true. It, you, yeah. You've got a lot of people. One of my biggest bugbears about referees, and I say it when I'm at games all the time, is that the you can clearly see that the they haven't played the game. The majority of them have not played the game at any level or any standard mm. because the, the, you know, they get conned. They get, honestly, they get conned every single week and they get conned with what's going on. 
you look at that on on Saturday where that where Coles put it in. Yeah, he's not even he's not even booked the player. He's not even mm. booked the player for the you know for the and it's the it's the little things where I said at the start of the season. There's a lot of games where referees will let stuff happen and let stuff go on. You uh, us at Oxford of a night. We should have seen a player sent off, but yeah. it's just the weak, the so weak referees. You only need to you only need to go in ad a couple of times and say, "I look at we have Collins time waste when we're nil nil at home." Collins yeah. is one of the. I, I, I'm I'm absolutely certain, and I get it that his first and foremost priority is to keep a clean sheet. Yeah. But sometimes I go mad with him for going so slow at home, you know, <laughs> and I, and I think. You 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 look at some of the penalties. You look at some of the decisions, and I, I, I you know, when people say it evens itself out, hmm. well, I'm absolutely certain there's gonna we're gonna have to get a hell of a lot of decisions in our favor <laughs> to even itself out. Because, <laughs> but I, I see it all the time. The other one, the other week, there were Bolton player Kachunga punched another lad in the stomach. Yeah, and Dion Charles got sent off, and hmm. and it's little stuff like that. It's not little stuff, it's big stuff because it changes the whole course of a game and, and it changes the way. I I do think that we've got to make sure that we don't use it as an excuse because it's yeah. not an excuse. Yeah. Not a case of if we had a great referee every week, we'd be top of the league. That's not true. It's just that for decisions that have gone against us have been, some of them have been scandalous, absolutely scandalous. That that part's so fun. And you know when the opposition fans and fair play Portsmouth fans, almost all of them are saying that's yeah. an unbelievably bad decision. Yeah. And and you know, it, it, it's stuff where it's stuff where it it does it, it changes the whole game. It, can you imagine? So if we do we don't pick up that late equaliser, the uproar then it's like it, it's it does it, it end of season the points they all add up don't they yeah I mean I saw that with some of Portsmouth uh, fans on, on some of the forums and, that, and even they were like coming out and saying it look to be fair that goal should have stood it shouldn't have blew right? and and it's not just like Boundary fans so when other fans opposition fans actually coming out and calling it as it is it's like refreshing in one sense knowing that it's not just us like having a moan and a complain about it other fans actually seen it and it's in league as well hard. There seems to be a lot more realistic fans in League One. To be fair, you know, like in terms of um, they'll call it how how, it, how they see it generally, as opposed to the you know that big time mentality where it's like you know we should we deserve this. We have that. I yeah. think I think it's um, parts of fans in particular they were saying about the the game and, and some saying, oh well, I think it were I think it were quite evenly matched and we were better second. You know, all that kind yeah. of stuff and. When you when they're talking about a referee and they're talking about a decision that's gone their way <laughs> as an absolute disgrace, it, it, you, you know, you, you know it, yeah. it, it it just it just and and there's some that have gone there's this they were you know conceding a penalty every week. I think you know that's a bit that's a bit freakish that, but penalty mm. it's it wasn't the penalties for me. It was the overall performances. Because they dictate to some extent, referees dictate the way the game goes in terms yeah. of if you have a bad tackle in the first half, um, and somebody gets away with one, you can guarantee that somebody who does the same in the second half will be a yellow card. Mm. And it's that lack of consistency and that lack of, and that's why teams can come. And Cambridge will try and do it on Saturday. Yeah, they'll try and come and they'll try and spoil it and they'll try and do you know some of the things that that we did against Oxford, hmm. if they're allowed to get away with it, yeah. they will do it. And I'll be honest with you, Neil, why wouldn't they do it if they can get away with it? To get away with it. You know I mean, it's human nature to push it as far as you can get without... Yeah. So we really need we really need to be savvy to that as well. But I think we've got better. I think we've got better at it, to be honest. Yeah, I've, I've noticed that in the last few games, I think we've got a bit savvy to it, like running ball down into the corner, uh, Obviously, dark cards, time wasting, and be sat over. Might not be pleasing to eye on on some, which I, I kind of get against Oxford. But at the end of the day, we come away with points, and we all know that you know a win's the most important thing, um, and it's what we need in a minute. Just keep in touch with it uh, in playoffs because uh, it's pretty tight up there. So 
Tom, as always, it's been a pleasure, mate. Uh, I'll have to get you on uh, pretty uh, well, probably next week sometime when, when it suits and we've got we can uh, work yeah, things out. Games thick and fast, haven't we? Before it ends, and so there'll be plenty to talk about. Thick yeah. and fast, and no doubt, uh, we'll, oh, we might have some better referees, like, but that might be another well, day. That one, <laughs> we stick with them, don't we? No matter what, <laughs> no matter what. Uh, Everybody what's been watching, please like, subscribe and share. Let us know your thoughts and comments about the players, about standard refereeing, a wide variety of things that we've been uh, discussing uh, today. So, Tom, as always, it's been a pleasure, mate. Um, take care. See you soon. And one thing left to say, you Reds.